Hi, I'm Heather Smith and welcome to Cloud Stories, a podcast exploring the accounting and business apps community. Stay up to date with the curated content I'm sharing by signing up for the Accounting Apps newsletter, available at heathersmithau.com. Today on our show, Kelly Gonsalves, founder and chief visionary of Totally Booked New York, Totally SEO, Ideation Think Forward, and Leading Lady Machine Works joined me. <laughs> and she, we were very grateful that she joined me because she's a very busy lady for, for uh, companies that she's operating there or has co-founded there. Um, and on the episode, we discussed after successfully um, co-founding those three companies, uh, Kelly shares her advice for future co-founders. We talked about SEO, what is it, um, and when um, accountants and bookkeepers should engage professional SEO support. We talked about transforming the accounting world through agreeing, developing and agreeing on the standardization of what good books should look like, um, and the tech stack for an Etsy store. And how working as a bartender or waiter lays the foundation for delivering excellent customer service. And always to tip well when you're in a culture um, or an environment that relies on tipping. Hello, Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us on the Cloud Stories podcast today. I am so excited to finally have you um, join me on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I know this is long overdue, so I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely is is long overdue. Now, are you speaking to us from New York today? I am. I am in Queens, New York, which is part of New York City. How exciting. Tell us something exciting happening in New York today for all of us who, who oh. desperately want to go there again. Actually, yesterday was the big Puerto Rican Day Parade in the city. And then coming up, we have Pride Parade at the end of the month. So I know that's a big thing that brings a lot of people in. Um, by me, it's a little quieter. I'm more on the outskirts, if you will. So we have lots of trees and greenery, thankfully. Parking, which is like a big thing in New York City. Um, and so it's a little quieter around here. But I like the neighborhood. It's nice and quiet. And I get to walk my dog. And everybody's nice to each other. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it, New York has a really massive reputation because it's on yeah. so many films and TV shows. I was watching This Is Us yesterday, yeah. and they accidentally ended up in Queens as well. So oh. it's it's <laughs> and it's it's uh, it has such this reputation. But um, um, yeah. we met in New York, and yeah. it was such a beautiful city, and I just had a, such a wonderful time there. But. But yeah. so, so I do have something controversially New York to ask you. So what oh, did you okay. think of, <laughs> what did you think of Alicia Keys singing Empire State of Mind at the Queen's Jubilee and swapping out New York for London? I mean, I try and see it as like the Queen has done some remarkable things. Just being the Queen for that long, i Maybe she's earned it. It's not a huge deal. I think we can loan it to her for <laughs> this one occasion. <laughs> I was, I was, it was lovely. It was very gracious, and and uh, I, I, I did enjoy it. Um, Rod yeah. Stewart wasn't happy. <laughs> Rod Stewart wasn't happy that he had to sing "Sweet Caroline" um, instead of his own songs. That was a bit odd. <laughs> yeah, that's a little weird. I could see being upset about that. He, he actually said. I don't know why they're making me sing this song, but anyway. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but yeah, anyway. I feel like it's the things you have to do for show business. Like, oh, you think at seventy years old, Rod Stewart doesn't have yeah. to do things like that. You know, it's like, oh, do you still have to do things like that when you're that big? And he he has songs because they said they wanted the whole audience to sing, but. He has, we are sailing. Everyone knows the words mm -hmm. to we are sailing. It only says we are sailing. <laughs> anyway, how they wanted a big there? giant sing-along. That's what it was. They did. <laughs> it was a soccer sing-along song, apparently. That's what it was. Ah. So okay. we we met um, when you kindly invited me to um, um, speak at the uh, New York 
Now you say NYC, is that city? Mm-hmm. New York City, New York, <laughs> New York City, city meet, meet yeah. up group for pro advisors. So um, yeah. the backstory for those listening in is uh, I just put out on Twitter, I'm coming to New York <laughs> and I'm like with my fingers crossed hoping to try and make it tax deductible. <laughs> Can I speak anywhere and and you kindly invited me to come and speak to your group and that was such it was so kind of you and it was such a fabulous experience I really appreciated that yeah it was so great to meet you like the timing lined up perfectly I said if you're coming to New York we will plan a meetup let's do it like no problem and we had that cute little room everyone was like kind of squeezed in but I feel like it was a pretty good meeting overall the pizzas were bigger than the room (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> well, you somehow got delivered New York pizzas, which are like bigger than the table. Yeah. Um, so, but it was it was a wonderful experience, and uh, um, sometimes sort of you need those intersections to to catalyze excitement. And uh, a lot of those people still contact me from from that uh-huh. uh, uh, session. And uh, uh-huh. you know, accounting and technology is an international language that we can go um, and uh, meet new communities for. So, what's what's uh-huh. happening? with that um, meetup group today so we've been mostly communicating online because up until recently everyone's been a little scared still to meet up with strangers which i completely understand Absolutely. um we did try and host a meetup ahead i think it was in december and we were like all right you know everyone had kind of rsvp'd we looked like we were going to have maybe 20 people or so and then they announced omicron virus and we were like oh. okay well <laughs> whoever is vaccinated and comfortable, you're still welcome to come. Um, Melio was gracious enough to host. Uh, They have a big office here in the city and some of their staff was like in from out of town. And so we, it was basically myself, three other accountants and Melio's staff, which it worked out fine. We had a good time, but the timing of it wasn't great. So I'm figuring if maybe if I can get an outdoor space for, uh, probably July, that might be a good look. So I'm hoping that people still want to, you know, meet with strangers. It's kind of uh, weird now though. So I understand the hesitation. So we'll see. Absolutely. It has been challenging and I I run a meetup group here in um, Australia and it has been challenging navigating that and um, um, being concerned for the community and, and, and trying to keep some sort of momentum yeah. there but but it is what it is and uh, we're navigating yeah. and hopefully coming out of it so as um so initially I'd like you to talk a little bit about your business which is totally yeah. booked New York so how does yeah. how did it start <laughs> what does it look like what does it feel like now so I started my business seven years ago, which it's so weird because it feels like it was yesterday. Um, but and I've told this story before, but I'll quickly tell it. I was working in uh, I was working for a startup, and the founder and I were not getting along. We were bumping heads constantly, and the the whole kind of setup was that he had hired myself and a couple of other people because he wanted people with real world experience, you know, quote unquote. And so when we would give him our real world answers, he was not a fan. Uh, so, so I was one of many to go come and go from that company. And it was kind of like we were playing chicken. Like, who's going to call it first? Who's going to just call it quits? So he fired me. And I always say this is like the best thing that's ever happened to me. So he fires me and I said, oh, OK, cool. No, no problem. Do you do you need anything else? Do you need me to sign anything? Is there anything that we need to do? And he was like, um, no, like he's never seen somebody so happy to be like, oh, I guess. And so I walked outside, I called my aunt and I said, it's, I said, great news. He fired me. And she said, okay. Um, she said, great. I am actually hosting a QuickBooks class starting next week. And now you'll have time to be there. So make sure that you get there. And I did. And that was seven years ago. So when I first started, I had taken a lot of referrals from my aunt, obviously, who had kind of trained me and taught me all the things. She's been a pro advisor for 35 years, you know, trained in QuickBooks, certified in QuickBooks, also trains other people, helps small businesses. Um, And so at first I was just kind of, you know, hopping around, going to different offices, different uh, client locations, helping with cleanups, learning how to like really work the program. Um, And then 
I grew it. I decided that I wanted to actually, I shouldn't say that I went to a conference where I then met like a thousand other people that do what I do. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is way bigger than I knew anything about. Cause I was kind of in my bubble. Um, and so I went to this conference and I learned more about QuickBooks online and apps and technology. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a whole world out there that I would like to explore. Um, so almost immediately I came home and within a month, I told all my clients we were going online. I started using more apps to automate some more things. Um, I just was able to take on more clients then because I wasn't, you know, taking the train in between client locations and trying to figure out how I was going to get home or what, I, what time I had to leave my house, um, stuff like that. And so once I went online, I almost doubled my business. Actually, I think towards the end of that year, I doubled my business. Um, and I've kind of been doing the same ever since, you know, obviously I've hired people in between. I have some contractors that I work with to do the more day-to-day, the more mundane, if you will. Um, but the stuff I enjoy, like exploring apps and figuring out technology and how to fix things and like the problem solving stuff, that's all still very much me. Um, so yeah, so it's, I mean, it's grown a lot. <laughs> I have to say, I'm, you know, I utilize some, um, so uh, social media a lot. Um, I started blogging and just adding to my website, making sure that I kept it active and that people knew that we were, you know, very much in business, that we were looking for new clients and it worked. So excellent. Yeah. Did you find when you came back from that conference and you said to your client base, okay, we're all going online. How did they receive that message? I didn't get any pushback, actually. One of my clients said, will this make it, you know, so that you can be more efficient? Will you be able to get more done? I said, yeah, absolutely. I said, think about if you contact me on a Tuesday and I'm at another client's office, I can't really help you from where I am. And so now I have more flexibility to be able to do things throughout the week, spread my time out, not concentrating on this three hours that I'm here, you know, on this one day. And they said, okay, do you need anything from us? Nope, I'm just gonna move you online. And that was that was it. There yeah, was really it, no pushback. It is interesting hearing because obviously you hear in the um community, some people deal with all of this pushback and then other people don't. And and I wonder if it's just through the way that we attracted their clients in the first place and how that they're able to cope with evolving to to yeah. that next level. And uh, I think and it is Oops, sorry. I was going to no, say, I think it's also sometimes the type of business. I can totally understand that like an auto garage or somebody that has something more going on in person might need somebody on site. You know, it's a little bit more yeah. uh, difficult to adopt like or adapt, I would say, to that system. Um, but the clients that I had at the time and the clients that I take on now are all very comfortable being remote, thankfully. Awesome. Very good. Very good. So as well as starting your own um, business, Kelly, um, you have co-founded three other companies. So what advice would you have for someone who's interested in co-founding a company? What have you learned through that process, doing it three times now? Um, Find a good partner. (laughs) So I have thankfully had some great partners uh, that it doesn't feel like I've taken on all the work. I would like to think that they don't feel that way either. Um, I work with Kristen most closely. Uh, Kristen Nisaraldo is one of my business partners. And we kind of play off of each other's strengths. So there's some areas where I'm more diligent. There's some where she's more diligent. And thankfully, we don't crash a lot um, or clash a lot. Uh, so it helps that we're you know kind of constantly helping out on the other side of whatever the other one is doing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, find good supportive partners. Um, also there's something about building a business with somebody that you, you're going to get personal, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're going to share with them. They're, you know, I mean, I'm constantly on the phone with her on zooms with her. So she knows all about my dog and where I live. And we've done, you know, zoom calls where I'm walking around my neighborhood and she knows what's going on with my family. If I have to, you know, take some time off or do something along those lines. Yeah. Um, so just know that it's, it's, I, I say this with any relationship, friendship, business partner, you know, romantic relationship, it takes yeah. work and it takes effort. And so you, you're going to get out of it what you put into it, but also mm-hmm. the respect and the time that you put into it is also going to affect how that other person feels towards you. So it's, 
kind of like being in a relationship. Yeah, <laughs> so make absolutely. sure you pick the right partner. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Now I know that I've had, um, uh, I've co-founded and, um, it, and it's gone badly wrong. Um, <laughs> Because same, I've been there too. <laughs> we didn't have the um, which we should have done paperwork done up front. Um, so they just took everything and and uh, oh. didn't didn't yeah. But it is what it is. I learned from that. I, I, it, it, it impacted my trust levels, but uh, yeah. but after a year, I was like, maybe we should start paying me now. And they're like, yeah, t- just nothing. But anyhow, it's about you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I've been there too. I've been there where partnerships have gone wrong. And I would say in those situations, especially depending on their relationship to the community or what you're doing or what you're building, whatever that looks like, um, trying to dissolve in the nicest, most mutual way possible. Yeah. Ago, uh, yeah. In that situation. Um but also it gets, I mean, they always say like, don't work with your friends and there's all this advice. And part of it is just that there's going to be some difficult things discussed. There's going to mm. be some ugly sides of people that you don't want to see or didn't expect. Um, so those are all going to kind of come to light. Like I said, you're, you're kind of constantly working with this person. You're constantly in touch. And so you get to know them better. And sometimes yeah. it's not always a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree with that. Thank you very much for sharing that, Kelly, and hopefully that's useful for people to hear. So one of the companies that you've co-founded is Totally SEO. So can you initially explain to our listeners who don't know what SEO is and why it's important? Just briefly explain that. Yeah, search engine optimization. That is what SEO stands for. Um, And I kind of always explain it as it's the way that Google and or Bing, but really Google, especially in the US, prioritizes where you come up in a search. So it's going to look at your website It's and do not think that you are mutually exclusive. Your website, your social media, even your phone number, your email address, all of those things are things that Google is very aware of. They know who you are. Um, they know who built the website. They know who's behind it. They know that you are connected to your Twitter and your Facebook. Um, and so I always say that all of those things are really important, right? So keeping your website active, keeping your social media active, all of those things are going to affect how you come up in a search. Um, what I started doing when, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to you know, grow my business. I started looking for low cost ways to be able to be found on the internet. And I was like, I want people to find me on Google. I can't rely totally on word of mouth. How can I get my name out there? How can I get my website out there so that people you know, click in? Um, and so I started blogging and that was... I know it sounds really simple, but that's really what the main drive was. I started blogging. I started sharing those things on social um, and it generated more leads. And you're doing it in a way that you're strategically speaking about a subject that your client base would be looking for. I always say that's important because as accountants, we tend to um, go very technical, use a lot of big words. (laughs) We, We don't always break it down. And so when you're writing these different pieces, you're wanting to do it so that your client who might be searching for you, you're using their terminology. So I'm not putting in debits and credits. I'm not talking about journal entries. I'm talking about why do I need a bookkeeper? What's a bookkeeper versus a CPA? Why do I need to reconcile my books? Stuff like that is what they're going to look for. And if you're putting out content that is answering those questions, you're going to move up on the search for those things. Um, another way to do it is geographically. So if you're looking to find clients in you know, your home area, so New York City is still quite large, but New York City for me, um, you know, bookkeeping in New York City, ProAdvisor, QuickBooks, stuff that I'm trying to make sure my clients are searching for and that I'm showing up in those searches. Uh, so that's what I strategically focus on. You know, what's a profit and loss? Stuff like that that they might be searching for. Um, and so in turn, it provides more leads. And then obviously it's kind of on you to close those leads, but I mean, it's a numbers game. So the more leads coming in, hopefully the more you're increasing your business. And so I was lucky that I apparently I'm not too bad at sales. So it did help me actually grow my business. 
Excellent. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm a really big advocate for uh, blogging as well. And uh, I think you did a really good job of explaining how to, to, to use words that they actually are, are typing in, not the words that we in the industry are using to each other. Um, and I see another mistake that you possibly see as well that accountants and bookkeepers use is they write for the accountants and the bookkeepers, but not for their client base. And it's like, that's fine, but who are you trying to get through the door? You're trying to get another accountant yeah. in the door. You're trying to get another bookkeeper in the door. Is, is if 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 so, then that's fine. But if not, <laughs> write it for your yeah. your client base. No, not to be hypocritical, because I've also written for you know different accounting publications. But it also helps just backlinks tying back to my website. And again, like I said, those social profiles, like Google knows that I am all of the same things, right? My my company site, my my Twitter, my Facebook, etc those blogs being published on other websites saying, Hey, you know, Kelly wrote this and tying back. um, That also is a huge help. I also don't think I explained what the company does. So basically that process I explained, we do that for other accounts and bookkeepers. (laughs) So so my question then to you is when does a accountant and bookkeeper need to engage with your services of an SEO expert? So So, now you can explain what your company does. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. I was like, I did not segue that very well. Um, so we, I call it beginner SEO. So I look at it as you've set up a website and a lot of people do this. They set up a website and they really don't ever go back to it. We do bookkeeping and accounting services. We, you know, we help you clean your QuickBooks, whatever it is. And the reality is you may not be changing your services, but you have to kind of remind Google that you're still there because when your website sits dormant, They just figure that you're maybe not interested. You're not really looking to pull in, let's say, you're not looking to move up on that search. You know, the goal to get to the front page when somebody looks for something. Um, So they want to make sure that you're active. They have these little bots that crawl your website, et cetera. So I always say that we're more like beginner SEO. We're going to take a look at your website. We're going to try and help you optimize what's already there. So if it's too technical, if it's not using the right keywords, if we want to really focus in on that, Um, we look at how you're being found right now. So sometimes you may not realize it, but something as silly as what you named a photograph can also help. I mean, it helps Google, but it helps you possibly wind up on the wrong page or the wrong search. And so if you're showing up in searches that are not really helpful to the client to find you for what you're actually doing, we're going to bring that to your attention as well. Um, And then we start blogging. So we ask you how you want to be found. We turn that into what the client would be looking for. So like I said, that beginner stuff more. And if it's a bookkeeper, it might be, why do I need a bookkeeper would be one of the first ones. Um, What we do versus maybe what a CPA does, that kind of stuff. Um, And then I always say it takes time. So it's more of a race, not a sprint. Because Mm -hmm. while you're building this um, content and you're putting everything online, Google is like, all right, yeah, we see you. Mm, okay, we see what's going on here. But you're not going to start to move up until they see that it's consistent. They see that the same keywords are being used, all of that kind of stuff. So it's um, it takes a little bit of time, but we offer uh, different two different levels, very basic of one blog a week or two blogs a week. Um, and we optimize them to the keywords that you want to be found by. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing um, that. And I'm a really, really big believer in um, blogging to put where you, what you're doing out there. And I know that, um, and it sounds like very much for you that I was blogging about what I was doing and mm. just managed to keep attracting those clients. And it's interesting because I spent a lot of time in the advisory or the management accounting space before people were even saying that that was possible in the small business space. And I had a constant flow of clients, but it's because I kept doing that. That's all I can put it down to because I yeah. see so many accountants saying they can't get that kind of work. And I was like, I was inundated with that kind of work. So I don't understand what's happening there, but I would never do their tax. I was never uh, trying to do their tax. So, Same. yeah. Same. So, <laughs> but I, I think, think the that- advisory stuff too is, and so obviously I've met you, you, you're a big personality or a strong personality and I know, and that's a good thing, right? I think some of it is confidence because I think that a lot of people have the, the know-how, right? They have the knowledge of maybe what a technology, like an app might need to make their, um, their tech work. 
but they don't always speak up. Some people won't reach out to the company and say, hey, I see how this could be done better. You know, pay me a fee and I will show you how to fix it. Um, So I think some of it is more confidence than anything else. I think that a lot of people do have the ability. They totally could, you know, handle it. Um, It's maybe just they don't realize that they have to ask for it speak up yeah yeah you're you're probably completely right it's a confidence thing because I feel that there's people out there who are far better than me but I was getting the work and I was like I don't don't know what's going on there and I I I sort of put it down to regular blogging so (laughs) so another company Kelly that you founded you've co-founded is ideation think forward which is transforming the accounting industry through innovation and collaboration. So what is the purpose of ideation, Think Forward? What are you doing and how can people get involved? So ideation kind of took a turn last year. We decided that we wanted to go in this into the, the direction of being a nonprofit. Uh, so what we want to do is create a standardization of what, I'm going to say in the simplest terms, what good books look like. So not how to get there necessarily. We're not looking to teach you how to do bookkeeping or teach you, you know, uh, about how to create a set of books, complete a set of books. We're looking to set a standard for what, when a set of books is complete, when you close a month, when you close the year, what does that look like if it's done correctly? Um, So more along the lines of gathering the community to say, you know, what's missing? What are we looking at? What are we looking for? making that into, um, I would say probably more along the lines of uh, a publication of some sort that's going to get us out there, white paper, whatever it is, certification probably. Um, And then using that to spread the word of what, you know, books should look like. Unfortunately, when you first start, especially, they, they tell you reconcile the bank and the credit card. They don't always talk about assets. They don't always say what other stuff can kind of creep in. And every business is different. So, We're not saying that, you know, out the gate, we're going to have all of those things covered, but we do want to look at what a basic set of books should look like when it's done, when when they're done, I should say. Um, And then the other side of that is we want to help accounting students understand what they're actually going to be doing. So a lot of times accounting students go to school, they're kind of in this bubble, they're taught, you know, T-charts and debits and credits. And then they go start a job and they sit behind a desk and they do a lot of data entry. I don't think that anyone ever really fully shows them, or in most cases, shows them that there's other jobs out there. There's other things they can do with that knowledge, right? Like all the technology that's out there. I mean, there are people now, there's accountants that are just helping um, tech companies. They're helping uh, create, you know, I mean, helping apps make their products better. They're helping larger accounting firms just source technology. They're not doing any of the bookkeeping work or the you know tax filing. Um, so with our, I'm going to call it certification, saying what this should look like when your books are done, this is what this should look like. Then going to an accounting student and saying, hey, when you apply this to an actual business, this is what you might be doing. But then also here's some other outlets of things that might interest you. Um, and with that, hopefully evolving it into um, some sort of hiring agency type of situation where we can help students actually work in firms, maybe smaller firms that are looking for, you know, somebody to come in and, and learn their, maybe their way of doing things, but learn what they're, you know, actually working on and hopefully help the community find the students and help the students not hate what they're doing when they go, you know, when they wind up at a, let's say a big four and they're stuck at a desk and they never see a client and it's not what they thought they were signing up for. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds um, like a, a fabulous um, 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 idea and, and big, hairy, audacious goal. So yes. um, <laughs> well done on, on pulling that together. It sounds like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of the first half of what you're talking about, we, we there's a solution out of Australia called Expert and what it does is it uses um, AI and uh, machine learning um, and it goes in and it looks at your file and it has about 75 or 80 things that it looks for and it surfaces if there are issues. So, for instance, if it doesn't have the right registration, if, if the invoice 
the registration number attached to the invoice doesn't match how the um, mm-hmm. tax has been coded. It will highlight that for you. So I'm wondering whether if a, if you come up with the parameters and then a solution mm-hmm. like expert could then go in over a file and uh, surface when when there's issues like accounts are not reconciled and um, uh, it could be like you only want 10 asset accounts or something like that, whatever the definitions or or whatever the parameters you're going to put in there. I think what we've seen with the, so we had one here recently and they they were acquired, but the issue that we saw with that was that there was no, um, there was no source of truth, so to speak. So if I go in and I reconcile the bank to say that it should be a thousand dollars, you know, closing balance. And I, it's checked off as reconciled. What we were seeing was all that the software was seeing is that it was reconciled. There was no checks and balances on the other side. And so a lot of times it was more, um, did these things get done check checklist style more so than are they correct? Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm not sure if, there's, I mean, there, there's probably a better technology out there that would, you know, cover some more in-depth things. But what we were seeing here is that they weren't, um, it wasn't robust enough to say, this is absolutely correct. You know, this is what it should look like. This is, this is matching the bank and all of those good things. Mm-hmm. Um, so. And I think yeah. you should definitely um, work on what the perf- what perfect is with with your uh, community and work on what perfect is but we should be able to bring tech in there to um do it, use that as a as an analysis yeah. point and 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 and, and at some some stage the humans and the machines meet <laughs> yes i am something. pro technology so that yeah. will not be an issue <laughs> <laughs> excellent so um and how um can people get involved um so we do have a website and there is a form that they can uh, sign up on and I want to say it's, oh, let me pull up my Yeah, browser. it was on your website on the front page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. So there's a form there that you can fill out and that'll come to me so that we can, um, you know, just basically reach out. We're looking for, it's going to be more people that have some thoughts around what, you know, that certification might look like, what it should look like when it's done, how technology be, can be like, let's say, woven into that. If it's where QuickBooks can pull in the bank statement, how can we leverage that to make sure that, you know, it's correct when it's done or something along those lines? Like if there's different ways to look at what's correct or open to that. Um, And also it's going to be, I mean, it already is, but the more people involved, the more research we can cover and more ground we can cover. Uh, For sure, we would like to put out some white papers. So anyone that's interested in giving us their opinion, their information, their knowledge they want to share. You know, I'm very big on sharing what I've done and what I know and what I can teach other people. So anyone that kind of has that mindset, we are happy to hear from you for sure. So is it, do you think um, US centric or do you think it's global centric? I think we will probably start with the US, um, but then I would say that there's no reason it couldn't be global. Mm-hmm. One thing about our industry is that like we kind of all agree on what's a well, we should all agree <laughs> on what a complete set of books look like, what a good set of books look like, um, what it looks like when it's done, that kind of thing. So I can't see why it wouldn't spread, mm. you know, to other regions. Excellent. Yeah, look, you know, you've got your tax element, which obviously that will be nuanced for regions, yeah. but to an extent, um, the other areas, uh, as as you said, it could be very interesting in terms of what what it should actually look like. So yeah. I think people listening in will definitely um, get in touch with you yeah. from that. So thank you for sharing. And the fourth company you co-founded. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're making me blush. I feel so silly. Go on. <laughs> With a past Cloud Stories guest, the lovely um, Kristen Nis Serraldo is leading Lady Machine Works, which is an yeah. Etsy store selling accounting and work from home merchandise. So, how fun. So, yeah. what's really interesting here is bookkeeping is quite process and routine orientated and each of the companies you've co-founded one by one is more creative in engaging the right side of your brain (laughs) (laughs) so one of the t-shirts you sell in the store says 
don't sell your time, make them subscribe to your mind. So if someone wants to subscribe to your mind, Kelly, they're going to get a very active brain. (laughs) Yes, for sure. (laughs) My poor friends and family have to listen to me ramble on all the time. (laughs) And and, and, um, so what I'm keen to know is what tech stack do you have in place for your Etsy store? So I'm particularly interested in the reconciling sales side of it and how you're dealing with the inventory side of it. So we are print on demand. So thankfully there are websites and services out there where we do the designing part. And when somebody places an order, it goes to um, that company. It's a warehouse. They print it and ship it to the uh, person that bought it. So direct ship. We're not holding inventory, although we have in the past for um, more special order type things. Like we've done custom gift boxes for Intuit. Um, and some other larger companies where they wanted to put together some different pieces into just one you know, box to send out. And I'll share some pictures with you of what my living room looked like with all of the boxes uh, kind of piled up. Um, but for the primary sales part of it, it is someone places an order, it goes to this um, other company, they print it and ship it. We do the design part and we set everything up on Etsy. Um, and then on the back end, we actually currently use Bookkeep to pull in all the sales into QuickBooks because we're both QuickBooks Online oriented. Uh, so everything comes into QuickBooks. Uh, so thankfully, that kind of eliminates the need for inventory. Um, but we do use, so we use Relay as our bank because uh, it's an online bank and it works very really well with QuickBooks. We use Bookkeep to pull in our sales. Um, we don't have, I wouldn't say we have a lot of expenses because it's usually just the cost of goods, right? Like we're actually making the product mm. and sending it out. Um, I do have, I now have a uh, printer for shipping labels because I learned how to create shipping labels. Uh, <laughs> so I do have that. And so sometimes shipping is one of our costs, uh, but we use um, Shippo, which pulls everything in if we want to, but ultimately everything goes into QuickBooks and most of it's online. So in some weird way, even though it's a physical product, it's still very remote, meaning we don't have to have a location or hold inventory. Um, I'm definitely not using my hands to put these things together. I am not that talented. Uh, So I am glad that we just get to design it and have fun with it. And then they make our products look really great and send them out for us. You are the queen of the hustle and the sign business, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Um, I think it's, we both needed somewhat of a creative outlet, right? So a lot of what we do is like you said, it's very process driven. We're kind of doing some repetitive things, right? So I have primarily e-commerce clients. Kristen has restaurant clients. And while both of those are fairly robust, we're still doing the same thing kind of over and over again sometimes. Uh, And so being able to, you know, doodle around and design some things. We Sometimes it'll be someone on Twitter that tags us in something. That t-shirt came from a LinkedIn um, post that somebody had said, hey, we need a t-shirt for this. And someone's like, Kelly can make t-shirts. And so <laughs> that just kind of drove us to create a little series of shirts that um, spoke to what they were talking about on LinkedIn. And so we can send that back and say, hey, we, you know, we created the t-shirt that you liked. And then that also gave us these ideas. Uh, and if you want it on a mug, we can do that too. Uh, so, you know, just kind of offering to see if anybody was interested. And thankfully, you know, the, the community has been super supportive. Um, Etsy was difficult at first. Uh, but now that we've kind of worked out all of the kinks, we're, you know, we're happy with it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's excellent. No, and I think it's really exciting to do something different. And, and especially with you in e-commerce, it does give you empathy and an extra understanding of actually on on your yes. clients and what they're going through because um I know I've gone into e-commerce clients and they've got a massive warehouse and they've got stock everywhere and mm-hmm. then they're like saying and we're selling on 16 different platforms and I'm oh, like yeah. how are you getting the data in and then they just show me a collection of post-it notes it's like the all the green ones are these ones and I'm like I'm like, this is a nightmare. <laughs> yes. And it's actively cringing. Yeah. And 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 they're like, oh, it's not that bad. No, 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 I can handle it. And I'm like going, your e-commerce at 
any point in time, someone can feature your earrings on Kim Kardashian and then boom, you're completely crushed because you will not be able to to, to, to serve. And and in e-commerce, you kind of want that scalability. So you want your processes in order. So I'm very grateful that you shared that tech stack. So hopefully other people can hear that and adopt that and, 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 and potentially run with it, whatever they're doing. I would say, and also you, I'm sure you have seen this, um, not just the, the product part, but now, so yes, you can be selling on 10 different marketplaces, but now you can take 25 different forms of payment, PayPal, Affirm, we're going to use direct like with Etsy payments. We're going to look at, oh, you want an invoice? We're going to send you a QuickBooks invoice. Like there are so many ways to collect money now. It is absolutely crazy. And so you have to then account for, and this is the thing they never fully realized, like you have to account for what the full sale was, what the fee was when you took that money, how long is it, even cash flow, how long is it going to take to get to you? You know, are they holding it for a month? You know, Etsy, eBay, et cetera, they've all been, Amazon, forget it. They've all been known to hold on to your money. So it's like all the things you kind of have to take into account. And when you're first starting, it's really difficult. Like nobody really tells you that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was a learning experience. And so anyone that comes to me and they're like, I'm selling in five different places and I'm not really sure what's going on or where my money is. I'm like, I totally get it. That's fine. Let's figure it out because I understand. Yeah. 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 No. And, and um, that payment comes in in batches and then you've got to match it to all the different amounts. And I know that there's some tools out there that assist with that, but um, uh, you, you, you want to get out of the way, the the, the e-commerce um, entrepreneurs, but also you got to get these things in place. Otherwise, it's 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 going to crush you. Yeah, so I agree completely. at some stage, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> so, like me, um, you worked as a, a bartender and a waitress for many years. So, I'm keen to know if you felt that that grounded you in delivering um, client experience that you offer to your clients today. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Um, ironically, we went out to eat yesterday. It was a big group of us and one of the girls had left early and some of us didn't agree with the amount that she had tipped. And I said, I don't think she's ever been a waitress or a bartender because when you are, <laughs> you, uh, very much understand, uh, how that goes and how difficult it can be. Um, you're dealing with different personalities. You're dealing with people who have had a bad day. People have had a good day. You know, some people are coming in to celebrate, but, Sometimes you're you're getting the person that's disgruntled or you know really just had a bad day and they kind of take it out on you and so having to kind of grin and bear it and smile through those things I think I learned a lot. Um, I also started young when I was doing that stuff because even I was I, so you said I'm a hustler like I've been working since I'm 14. I was just like give me a job even if it's in the summer I'll babysit I'll I'll bus tables whatever it is um, and so. I, you know, I kind of just stayed. It was always my fallback safe space. I can always, you know, pick up a job in a restaurant in the city or something. Um, and thankfully in New York City, it pays really well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think you you learn a lot. You you get people from, I learned about, you know, foreign currencies and how tipping works in other countries because you would get uh, people coming into the city as tourists and you're like, hey, I didn't get a tip. And it's like, they didn't do that on purpose. They don't do that where they're from or whatever it is. So I just, I feel like I learned a lot of, is it street smarts or common sense? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the right term for it is, but I definitely learned a lot from it. Um, And I think it's also given me some kind of uh, better perspective on personalities and understanding people, definitely in reading people. Uh, So I'm, I'm grateful for it. I personally think that everybody should work in a restaurant at least one summer out of their lives just to kind of understand how that goes, but I'm not in charge. So, Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I felt that um, um, uh, being able to bounce through different personalities so quickly um, and uh, being able to serve them um, um, and, and, and being able to talk to them and deal with what they're having. Cause here in Australia, we don't tip. And for us, yeah. it's it's kind of offensive. So if someone came and put money in my hand, it it was yeah. offensive to me. <laughs> and I would just right. like, and you're like, like uh... <laughs> oh, what did I do wrong? Why are you giving me this money? Um, um, so, but but in the end, I was working in quite a big international hotel, and so everyone was just tipping. And 
Yeah, but it's just just it's just a completely different culture. So that that the tipping yeah. side is one side of it. And when I was in um um America, I was literally everyone, have I given them enough money? Oh. Is it okay? Are you sure it's okay? Yeah. When I went so, to Ireland, I was young and it was the same thing. My mom's like, no. <laughs> I was like, what? I didn't, I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so it is interesting. But I definitely think that face to face in real life interaction is 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 beneficial for young accountants to go through if they're studying and they've got extra capacity, something to consider rather than potentially go and do bookkeeping. I would actually consider it a um a, a foundational learning for, for you. Yes. Um, um plus it's you're earning money. If, if I have kids, they will be working in restaurants when it comes time for them to get a job. There's no question about it because you also have to, it's like thinking on your feet. You have to be able to come up with an answer almost immediately. You have to know, you know, what's in the kitchen, what we've run out of, what's the specials for the day. Does anyone have allergies? Um, and then you're also having to do all of it kind of with a smile on your face, at least if you're doing it right. So I think a lot of it also taught me like a little more confidence, um, kind of like putting on a performance, you know, I'm very, yes. I'm comfortable now speaking in front of a room, but a lot of it was, I mean, you did not know always what you were going to get when somebody sat down. So it was very, hi, I'm Kelly. Nice to meet you. I'm going to be your server today. You know, here's what's going on. Uh, please don't hesitate to let me know what you need. You know, those kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, serving them, but, but, but in so many different ways. So uh, yeah. Awesome. It was good to talk about that. So congratulations, Kelly, on the many, many accolades that you have um, earned over the years. You've been named um, the top 10 pro advisor in the world. So what does this mean for you? Um, so 2019, I was the top up and comer for the top 100, Insightful Accountants top 100 pro advisors. Um, and I have thankfully remained on the list since. Uh, again, this year I was named as part of the top 100. So, um, I, so to be honest, I think part of it is, uh, you know, recognition and a little bit of validation. Um, the other part of it is I'm proud of myself, you know, like my friends and family don't fully understand the accounting industry or our community, but when something like that happens, my mom's like, Oh my gosh, like, yes, that's amazing. You know? So I think part of it is, um, to the people that aren't necessarily in the community, it's something that they, they recognize and they understand, which is important. Um, and it also doesn't hurt to have it on my website. So, <laughs> you know, clients don't always understand the stuff that we apply for or that we um, compete for, so to speak. Uh, but when you say I'm a top 100 pro advisor, you know, they're like, oh, that's really cool. Awesome. Sounds good. You know, <laughs> like somebody must have known that you knew what you were doing to give you that award. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I guess it makes me feel really proud, but um, a big part of it is that it's, it's validation and recognition, uh, for hard work, you know, like we work really hard at what we do and it's not, I know a lot of people say, oh, it's not rocket science. Oh, I could do this. I just don't have the time, you know, get, get all the comments that potential clients make, but when peers recognize that you're working hard, it's important. And it, it really does, it boosts your confidence, um, it definitely gave me some validation. I totally had uh, imposter syndrome for the first couple of years uh, that I was in business. So, you know, that's also a big boost. And I always say to everyone else, like apply for these things. You never know. You never know. A lot of people think, oh, I'll, I'll never get it. Oh, I won't make the list. Just apply. There's no yeah. harm in applying. Yeah. Excellent. And I am part of the, um, one of the benefits of applying is you actually get self-reflection, which especially when you're a small business, you don't get a lot of time for self-reflection. So it's a, a structured way to go through self-reflection, which can be beneficial. Um, yeah. It can be challenging, but also beneficial. <laughs> um, yeah. So you've mentioned to me the book, Everything is Figure Outable by Marie mm -hmm. Folio impacted you. So you mentioned that that book impacted you. Can you share with yeah. listeners um, what you like about this book? Yeah. So Marie Forleo, I want to say that was probably two years ago. I think it was her second or third book. Um, the philosophy that literally everything is figure outable is a big deal for me. So a lot of times um, I'm going to give an example. This weekend I was building a dresser and one of the pieces broke and I was very upset. 
And I was like, oh man, what am I going to do? I put it back together and I put the screw in a different place because I had to figure out how to fix this, this physical thing that was in front of me. Um, and so she talks about a lot of challenges, even growing up, you know, it was like, there was a radio that her mom had and it stopped working one day and she's like, oh no. And they tinkered with it and they were fix it. Like the philosophy that if you put enough effort into it, if you think about it, if you bounce ideas off of somebody, if you want this thing to happen, if you want to fix the thing or create the thing, whatever it might be, you just have to figure out the path to get there. And so the whole idea that, I mean, it sounds small, but that you can do whatever it is that you want. You just have to figure out the path to get there. It is figure outable. And I, I mean, I still think back seven years ago, I was working in a crappy startup and I'm like, <laughs> I got to cheat. I got to make some changes. And fast forward to now, I'm much happier. I mm. get to take vacations. I have a flexible schedule. Um, you know, I get to go visit my mom in Florida a couple times a year and stuff that I wouldn't have been able to do if I stayed in a corporate setting because it was safe. Mm. So I look at it like your life, your path is figure outable. You just have to figure out how to get there um, and kind of pave your way. And sometimes you're going to be the only one on that path. So you're going to be the person that's figuring it out. Uh, you just have to, you just have to keep going. So that's really what she talks about. That's kind of the overall message, but yeah. very inspiring for me. Excellent. Thank you very much for um, sharing that with um, us, Kelly. I'm sure other people will find that quite interesting. So, yeah. Kelly, um, thank you so much for joining me today. How can people get in touch with you? My website would probably be the best way. So it's just totallybooked.nyc instead of .com. Um, and there is a form on there that you can fill out to reach out if you have questions. Um, and that's, if you're an accountant or bookkeeper, shoot me a message. If you are a potential client with a small business, shoot me a message, whatever the case is. If you have any questions, if there's anything I've mentioned that you want to know more about, I am always happy to get on a Zoom call and, and share whatever it is that I can that will help you know your path or whatever it is that you're working on. Thank you so much today, um, Kelly, for joining us and sharing your insight and wisdom with us. We've really appreciated it. And I'm sure the listeners of Cloud Stories will have benefited from it. Thank you. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. I hope you liked listening with that interview with Kelly. Um, I was really grateful to get her on the show, especially after uh, she had been so kind to um, invite me to speak in New York. And uh, hopefully I'll return and do that again one day. So you've been listening to the Cloud Stories podcast. Now I encourage you to subscribe, leave a five-star review on iTunes or Podchaser so other people can um, find this podcast. And also if you have a friend who you think might would like this show, please share it with them. Stay up to date with the curated content I'm sharing by signing up to the Accounting Apps newsletter available at heathersmithau.com and you can connect with me on all social media channels at heathersmithau.com.